Hey there, Wargamers! I am Luca from Mini Wargaming, and what you're about to watch is a repurposed Warhammer 40k battle report from the Vault because we want to make sure that both of our viewerships have new content. So if you're not a Vault member, you have, we wouldn't have seen this video before. But we want to make sure, obviously, for our Vault members, we have brand new content every day. So in the Vault, we have Steve and myself playing a game of Warhammer 40k. He plays Raven Guard. I play the Word Bearers. I bust them out. They've been rebased on 32 millimeters. So I'm very excited for that. If you want to check out that game, you can click on the link down below to get yourself a seven-day free trial to the Mini Wargaming Vault to check out that game, as well as a bunch of other 40k content to go along with it. Hopefully you guys enjoy the show, and as always, happy wargaming. After defeating a Xenos cult, the White Scars and Sisters of Battle have been exposed to a wild fauna on a backwater planet. Now the two forces cannot tell friend from foe. The two forces now collide in battle. We play and call it work. Mini Wargaming's Warhammer 40k Battle Report. Sisters of Battle, 1500 points. Changed up my list quite a bit from last time. Two detachments though, that's the same. We have a battalion, we got a spearhead. A lot more firepower, that's why I got a lot less models. Starting with the battalion, led by Celestine. First time bringing her. Like her warlord trait, pretty iconic model when it comes to the army, so I figured might as well include her. I'm sure you've been waiting to see her. She's gonna be my warlord because it's Celestine, she's a saint. We're playing our martyr lady, she doesn't actually work with them. Celestine is the warlord. She's got a pretty good warlord trait, beacon of faith. I always bring that, or at least I have in the past, like three games I've played. Usually I just bring a heroine in the making for a beacon of faith because I like the extra miracle dice, but she's got a built in, so why not? Uh, she doesn't get anything else fancy to that. I did buy both of her Gemini, which are her little companions that follow her along. Second HQ, leading the battalion is going to be a cannoness. Now, this is the one I love bringing with the Art Martyr Lady. She's got the Relic Bolt Pistol. This is the Martyr of Vengeance. It's, it's a souped up Bolt Pistol. It's got four shot strength, five minus two, two damage. They're great Primaris killers. Unfortunately, there's no Primaris in this matchup, but I'm still more than glad to bring it. Now, because I like the stratagem Heroin in the Making so much, I spent it regardless because I do like Beacon of Faith, but I do want my cannoness with the Martyr of Vengeance to still pack a punch in close combat. With that bull pistol, I bought her a Blessed Blade, which is essentially a Relic Blade. Though with Heroin in the making, she's allowed to take another Warlord trait that is not Beacon of Faith, it has to be separate from one that's already used. I gave her Righteous Rage, which allows her to reroll wound rolls if she charged, was charged, or performed her heroic intervention. Kind of really makes up for her piddly strength. Troop choices, kind of minimal here. I, I usually end up doing this. Now this is where I changed up my list. I usually bring a lot more sisters on foot. In this case, I went with a lot more kind of firepower and tanks. Running the minimum sisters of battle here, three squads. I still have two melted guns in each squad of sisters though. Two squads of five, one squad of six because of points. The squad of six is an extra bolt gun. Each one of the sister superiors in the squad has a power mall because if there's one thing I like, it's symmetry and power malls, except for the one squad of six. That's not symmetrical with the rest, it's some lying. Every single one of those squads is going to be riding in an immolator with its immolation cannons and its fake heavy bolters. Again, running with the old models here, guys, I have no choice. I literally have to take that heavy bolter. I can't not take it, so I gotta, I'll got gladly pay the points for it, but it, you have to imagine it's there. Use, use that strong imagination, that Warhammer imagination. You got a heavy bolter. And the immolation flamers, guys, are cheaper than the multi melters. so why not? Moving on to the spearhead detachment, it is also led by a cannoness. Nothing fancy on her other than a blessed blade. Bringing her to give rerolls to the exorcist. She's going to be doing the parking lot thing. Uh, it's three exorcists. A lot of firepower comes from one of them, so let's see what three can do. If it's too much, maybe I'll never bring it again unless it's like, I don't know, I don't know where the sisters are at power level wise. It's, it's tough to call. I'm going to try out three exorcists once. And again, imagine this with me. Heavy bolters on every single one of them. Again, old models. I have no choice. I literally have to take that heavy bolter. Use that Warhammer imagination. They have the really expensive missile launcher organs. So it's instead of the old D6 shots, it's heavy 3d3 now so it's always minimum three up to nine shots strength eight minus three d6 damage a pop at 48 inch range it's essentially a missile launcher with extra ap and a lot of potential shots lastly i had the points for them they're much cheaper now it's kind of cool to see them on the board we got penitent engines now these aren't the new ones our whole sisters of battle army is super old so we're running the old ones and by old ones i also mean not the mortifiers either because i don't think that kid even exists yet there you go 1500 points sisters of battle Taking a look now at my 1,500 points of White Scars. 
I decided for this game that I'm not going to be taking anything Primaris. Partly because I wanted to test myself and not seeing what any Primaris can do, and also because uh, I'm tired of taking the Green Marines. I want to start working on my own stuff, and that is currently on my painting table, so we shall see what the Studio White Scars can do with no Primaris. My Warlord today is going to be my good old Rev Captain with his Thunder Hammer and his Storm Shield. I did go ahead and spend two command points to make him into a Chapter Master. He has been absolutely fantastic as a Chapter Master, so I'm going to continue the trend in spending those two command points. Boy, is this guy a beast. For his Relic, he's going to have Wrath of Heavens. With the Wrath of Heavens, it makes his bike 16-inch movement, and he can go over enemy models his own models, and even terrain as if they are not there. Ghost Rider, eat your heart out. For his Warlord trait, he is going to have Chagorn Storm, which allows him to have an extra D3 attacks anytime he charges or performs a heroic intervention. And I also spent one command point for Tempered by Wisdom, which allows him to have one additional Warlord trait. So I'm going to be taking the Master of Snares. If any one of Luca's units are within one inch of me, on a 4+, plus, he cannot fall back. Next up for my second battalion HQ choice, I'm going to be taking a Librarian. A Librarian on bike. This is actually a legend choice. I love a good old Librarian on bike being able to keep up with the rest of my army, so I've decided to go ahead and take it. For my psychic powers, I'm going to be taking Ride the Winds and Storm Reap. Moving on over to my troops, I'm taking three tactical squads. Oh, look at these old boys. Let's see if these guys can do any work. Just the good old fashioned bolt guns, servants of the emperor. And then last but not least in this battalion, I have two predators with the auto cannon and last cannons. Now this is where my meat and potatoes is, is in my outrider detachment. Leading it is going to be a con on bike. What you see is what you get with this guy. For my fast attack choices, we have three squads of bikes. Two of them are going to be six man strong. Another one's going to be seven. Had a couple points left over. All of them are going to have chain swords and two in each will have plasma guns because I love me plasma. If it has plasma, oh boy, bang, bang, shot me down. And then once again, I had a little bit of points left over. I know Luca has some kind of armaments. I do have to contend with that, so I decided to add in some attack bikes. They both have multi-meltas, and they're fairly cheap, clocking in at 50 points. If anything, they're a decent distraction and a threat for Luca. So, we shall see. And this is going to be 1,500 points of White Scars for the con. Frontline Warfare has shown its face again. If you're familiar with Age of Sigmar, it is Battle for the Past, at least the old one. Vito and I have already rolled up. We figured out our deployment zones. We ended up getting Frontline Assaults. Kind of coincidentally, that is the elongated Dawn of War deployment. I am the defender. Vito won the roll-off. He chose to be attacker. He will be deploying first. We'll get to that in a moment, though. With Frontline Warfare, you have four objectives. One in each player's deployment zone, and two in no man's land, equally deployed from each player's deployment zones. Essentially a T in a way, but not a perfect T. As the defender, I place the first objective and then Vito placed one. They both have to be in our deployment zones, more than six away from a table edge and ho well, wholly within our deployment zones as well. After that, we place an objective each in no man's land, uh, equal distance from both of our deployment zones. The way this mission works is at the end of every battle round, you score victory points based on which objective you currently control, following the normal rules for controlling an objective. You get one point if it's your own deployment zone, Four points if you control your opponents. Pretty much a game changer there. Otherwise, if you control the other ones, two points each. So one for your own again, four for your opponents, two for the ones in no man's land. And again, it's important to note you control them at the end of the battle round. So whoever goes second kind of has control over what he wants to pick and kill off of certain objectives. And of course, it lasts between five to seven turns. No sudden death rules in play, and we have First Strike, Line Breaker, and Slay the Warlord as secondaries. For my deployment, I decided to spread my forces on two flanks. On my right flank, we have my Predator, a squad of Tactical Marines, my Con on bike, and an Attack Bike. I do have a squad of bikers there, just to go ahead and put a little bit of pressure on Luca's big tanks. Uh, there's a little bit of firepower here with the Predator hoping to, you know, put a little bit of suppression on some of Luca's emulators. Right slab dab in the middle are my tactical marines. My squad of five, their main goal right now is just to hold down this objective. As for my left flank, I think this is going to be the hammer flank. 
in the sense that I have my two big bike squads, a second predator, my warlord, and my librarian. I do have my tacticals on this flank. I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do with them. I think though, one of the hopes is as my bikes move on forward, the tacticals will move in behind and then hold the objectives as the bikes do all of the wet work as we, we in the assassin profession like to say. Going now into my far left flank, we have an attack bike. Uh, my goal for this attack bike is to move on to Luca or my left flank or Luca's right flank and to cause a little bit of a distraction. If this is the case, I'm not entirely sure, but that's one of my hopes. And that's gonna be for my deployment. Let's see what happens. For the Sisters of Battle, classic aggressive maneuvers when it comes to deploying the emulators with the contents inside. I made sure all of them are right at the deployment line to rush forward as far as they need to to get in range of enemies to hit them with the immolation flamers and maybe unload the ladies inside. Being the defender, probably gonna go second means that I do have control over the objectives and where my obsec units go. Now, can they get to the objectives right away? It's gonna be a stretch, but they'll be set up for later turns. I put one emulator on my right flank with my warlord and two emulators on my left. The exorcists are a different beast though. I chose to be very defensive with them. I actually put them all behind cover on my right flank and on my left flank. Not really behind cover, but it struggled with line of sight, so it's kind of crammed in a corner. They're all at the very back of my deployment zone, right on the edge of the table, because they don't need to go anywhere. They don't like to move, and they don't like being charged, so they need to be as far away from that as possible. And they still have good line of sight to fire, even if they don't move. Pennington engines over on my left flank, supporting over there. Again, much like Vito's deployment, having to commit some force to the left and to the right. It's, it's, it's hard. Putting the engines on the left, hard call just because not too sure where I want to split my forces. So I went with en two engines on the left, my only two. And I went with the exorcist on the right flank. Supported by a Cannon S. This is not my Warlord. This is the one with the Blessed Blade and just a normal bolt pistol. She's going to be sitting there giving reroll hit rolls of one for the two exorcists she's nearby. With my Warlord on my right, the double exorcist and the Cannon S supporting them, I decided to put Celestine on my left because I think that's where she would best be served. Now, it's not a hard commitment to the left. She could easily just fly to the right. She does have that 12-inch move and fly. It won't slow her down that much, but I think her help is more needed over there on the left. Assuming I go second, the whole battle plan here is to just react to what Vito does. That's how I prefer to play in general. I never like being proactive because I'm bad. I'd much rather just react to what my opponent does, and I find I do much better when I do that kind of stuff. Turn one for the White Scars. I wanted to move as quickly as I could. Starting off with my left flank, the attack bike, I spent one command point for Born in the Saddle, which allows me to advance and still shoot. And being bikes, they are allowed to turbo boost, which means they automatically move six inches. So this attack bike moved 20 inches and can still fire all of its weapons. As for everyone else on my left flank, they just went right away to the objective, those two big bike squads, along with my warlord and my librarian. I just want to get everyone in a decent uh, range for my rapid fire weapons, trying to open up one of those tanks and get to all the juicy, juicy ladies inside. And my chapter master is going to provide me with all of the sweet rerolls. Going now onto my right flank, I decided to move the bikes as well, just to get as many objectives as I could. Same thing with my Conan bike. He's gonna give them a little bit of support, being able to reroll some of the ones. Additionally, I advanced all of my tactical Marines. Funny enough, they both rolled sixes, so uh, they kept up with the bikes. These guys have been eating their Wheaties. As for the Predators, I decided to keep them still. I don't want them to have to be hitting on fours. These do have some pretty decent range with the Predator auto cannons and the last cannons. They're going to try to open up some of Luca's tanks and then all of my bolter fire will do the rest. Let's see if my plan pays off. All right, my man, let's get this crazy aggressive maneuver on way. All right, we're going to go right into the psychic phase, starting with smite. All right, so smiting with this guy, going to definitely be hitting my emulator there. This goes off on a five. Boop. That's a good. Um, hmm. I'm just going to go ahead and let the smite go off. For D3 mortal wounds. I will go ahead and suffer two. Eight wounds left after that. I want to note that for my sacred rites, I'm supposed to roll those earlier on. I already got them. I have divine guidance and light of the emperor. Now, I'll mention these later on my turn as well for anyone who's curious what those are. And at the start of the battle round, I got a three as a miracle die. The next power that he's going to try to cast is called Storm Reaved. This power goes off on a six. You're going to get it. Now, what does this do? This is the Nova Watch. 
So this power, uh, I get to pick a friendly unit within 12 inches, and if successfully cast, no overwatch can be taken on that unit. Well, I don't like that. So <laughs> I'm going to maybe go about trying to stop that. Good idea. You know what? I have a sneaking suspicion that this vehicle is going to get destroyed. So we're going to go ahead and just not worry about it. Okay. And the unit that I'm going to be putting it on is going to be the big unit here of seven. Going into the shooting phase, uh, <laughs> the attack bike that used the board in the saddle is going to be firing its multi melta and the bolter into this emulator. Starting with the bolters, hitting on threes. Hmm, getting, looking for fives to wound. Not getting one. Bad. Three up armor. We are not okay, we take a damage. And now the multi melt on a three. Oh! Ooh, he's gonna do it! Spending a command point for a reroll. Then oh, got it. Works out. Straight fate for toughness seven. Looking for threes to wound. Yep, that's a vest. Okay, well, you know what? Uh, now, it's like AP five because of the Devastator Doctrine, but I'm shielded by the Emperor. And ah, he protects! Why? Woohoo! I love you, Emperor, and your golden, golden, beautiful light. And you, you golden, beautiful die. That's fair. Predator and last cannon. Yeah, yeah. Probably, yeah. <laughs> We're just trying to open it up. Yeah, that, 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 let's get them out. Yeah. Starting with the uh, auto cannon, heavy 2D three shots. Thud, thud, thud. Mm -hmm. Okay. Three. That's poo. Could be better. Hitting on threes. Okay, there you go. Okay, okay. Good yeah. thing you didn't move. I'll take it. Looking for fours to wound. Oh, we got... Oh, getting one. We got one wound under the tree there. It's a five. AP one. I have a four up armor. Oh! That's three damage. We got last cannons coming at me. I think this one's worth command point rerolling because the plasmas will put me to a six up save. This is a good chance to negate three damage. Oh, please! No! Oh, oh. It's a two again. It's a trap every time. So I will be taking three damage. And then we have the two last cannons hitting on threes. Oh, we got one miss. Strength nine. Looking for threes to wound. Oh! oh! Okay, we're good so far. We still got a lot of plasma coming at me, though. Well, we got a second predator. He's gonna crossfire into this emulator over here. Every it's not, it's not exactly really what I wanted to do here, but I'm gonna do it. It's a good option yeah. still. Everything into it, I suppose. Everything. Heavy 2d3 for the predator auto cannon. Oh! No. oh. Two! On threes. Oh, oh he's got one in there. Hit. That's right. Captains are a little too far forward there. Yeah. Uh, looking for a four. A four. Oh, we still got two last cannons. I'm getting lucky so far, maybe. Last cannons? Oh, two hits. hits. Three is to wound. And, oh, oh, getting vested. Okay, okay. So, okay, I got the protection and the light of the emperor here. One at a time. Fail, fail. All right, <laughs> you know what? It's okay, you're gonna roll like a, don't roll, you gotta roll double ones. A one and a two, a yeah, one yeah, and a two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And a rip. Does Seven. it Does it explode? No. No. The ladies all pop out there. The warlord a little bit behind the one melted gun there. That is going to be first strike, and I will be getting a, a miracle die at the end of the phase for that. But my ladies are out in the open. Got to roll for the six ladies that popped out. Any ones is a dead. Yeah, we're going to lose this bull gun. But that triggers their order rule. They're all plus one to hit now. Next up, we're going to go with this squad here of bikes. We're going to supercharge our plasma guns into the exorcist, but all the bolt fire is going to go into that. The plasma aren't rapid firing right now, but the guns all will be. Uh, we'll start with the plasma Start first. with the plasma supercharging? Yeah, right. first. Right. Uh, the first one. Oh. Oh, I get to reroll for chapter master. Shepherd to master says you're good. Thank you, my con. And then the second one. <laughs> oh, oh. Thank okay. you, my con. They're both okay. Looking for fours to wound. We got two. Ooh, two. Oh, that's respectable. That goes through it. Well, I'll have a minus three, eh? Because of the cover, I'm at a five up armor. We will make neither of those and take four damage. Eight wounds left on this exorcist from the plasma. Now 24 bolt gun shots. On threes, rerolling all the failed misses. <laughs> And it helps quite a bit. Looking for threes to wound as your toughness three. Yeah, yeah, they're not great. Uh, 15 wounding hits. That is gonna be one, two, three, four. Dead. I guess I could use a miracle die on one of these, but they're all dead anyways. Oh, if I used a miracle die, I could have saved one. Uh, well, I haven't used a reroll yet, so I haven't used it for this phase yet. It's actually pretty important that I keep one of these models alive. That way my HQ is in a pretty good spot. So I'm gonna go ahead and re-roll one, but I think I'm not gonna re I'm not gonna use I'm just gonna use my one miracle die I have to make it automatically a three. So I, I spend the command point and I pass the save. And then that was the one miracle die I had from the uh, start of the battle round. Now, to note, I know I should have rolled those dice one at a time until I had a proper wound pool and I kind of messed up. It would have been to my advantage to roll one at a time looking at the result, but that's what I get. It cost me a command point, but I'm still alive with one lady. It's gonna be her. These three, unfortunately, will die for the cause. 
a second. I lost, I forgot I lost one to the vehicle. So instead of spending the command, she's dead technically as well. So instead of spending the command point, I won't bother because they're all dead anyways. I forgot that one died to the emulator being destroyed. So I should note that she's not actually my warlord, she's the heroine in the making. I still don't want her to die though. Next we're gonna go with my librarian into the canvas. Gun on threes. Rerolling for the chapter master. Thank you. And wounding on threes. Because she's still pretty soft. We got two wounding hits. Well, she got three up armor. I'm just going to roll these. I'm not too concerned about those. She does take a damage. Four wounds left. Now it's his turn. Yep, the con into the cannon nest. Right. Hitting on twos. Uh. Oh, threes to wound. Ooh, two. Two. All right, three up saves. Oh! oh. Uh. Okay, well, she's got two wounds left. So now next up, we have this squad here of seven bikers. I'm going to be supercharging the plasmas into the exorcist, exorcist. over here. Uh, three bikers will fire their bolters into her, and then four bikers into her. This cannoness over here, who is the next closest after we measured, unfortunately for me. Starting with the plasmas, hitting on threes. Rerolling <laughs> my con. Ah, no! Oh, ho, ho. so one of those two is dead. We'll worry about that later. I'm a little pleased with that. The second one. Oh, what is going on? What is Come going on, con. On. Yeah, okay, we got a hit. We got a hit. Looking for a four to wound. Ah. Okay, oh, we, we got, got a wound. Uh, back to a five up save because of cover. And we don't make it, so that's a further two damage. Gonna put you down to six. And then all the bolter shots going to the cannonist that down to two Ooh, wounds. Oh, my heroine. Rerolling. And that's all but one. Threes to wound her. Okay, that might do it. Six wounding hits on her. Oh, she takes zero damage. Oh. Oh! Pretty good. Uh, yeah. Pretty good. I mean, she's a win. And then the poor second lady. Threes rerolling. Okay, again, one miss. Threes to wound. That's uh, much better. Well, three up save on her. She's only got five wounds. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Oh! Oh, no! Oh, my sweet, sweet, sweet. <laughs> well, that's going to be a divine intervention. I don't feel like losing my second cannoness right now. I have one miracle die, which is a three. Not that that matters. I'm going to be using that to fuel her wounds when she comes back at the end of the phase. That can only, this can only happen once per character. And I don't get any miracle dice as a result of her death because she doesn't die. So at the end of the phase, she's going to pop back right where she was exactly there with one wound remaining because I had one miracle die. Cost me two command points to do, though. You know what we just did? We just reenacted Platoon. But, 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 but getting shot on the spot by thousands of bullets. <laughs> Moving over to this flank now. Uh, we're going to attack the, or we're going to go with the attack bike into an emulator. Boom, because it's a white scar, it ignores moving firing heavy weapons on that bike. Starting with the multi melta hitting on a three. Pew. Oh, miss. Uh, rip. And then the bolters hitting on threes. Getting three. Fives to wound. Ooh, nada. Over here with the guy that got hot on a four of that guy's dead. We'll say, because there's one of them. Yeah. So it's that guy. Rip. Next, I'm gonna go with this big squad here of bikes. I'm gonna supercharge my plasmas into that emulator. Oh, did this that emulator there? Oh, sorry, not emulator. The uh, uh, the penitent engine. engine. Now where are the bolt guns going? Uh, same thing. Oh, just <laughs> everything in them. Gotcha. They are just outside of twelve. That guy is within twelve. So we have two single shots with plasma so both supercharged. First one. In... Oh, misses. No, not dead though. Second one. Hits. And a hit. Three to wound. No armor save. Okay, I take two damage, but they have a rule. And that rule is called Berserk Killing Machines. They shrug off damage on a five. Come on, do that thing where you're Berserk. Bam! Mm, we'll get there. Three wounds left on the back one. And then all the bolter shots hitting on threes. But I do get to re-roll the ones because of the con. True. Rerolling those six misses. Oh, one miss. There's a few twos, though. Fives to wound. Four wounding hits into a four-up armor save. I will go ahead and fail most of those. I fail three. Five up to ignore the damage. Okay, there we go. We take one damage. Now the mad. Tunes left. And then the con on bite's gonna try to finish one of them off. Hitting on twos. I wish you bad luck. Rerolling the ones. <laughs> I should have Awful that. Luca with friends. <laughs> Five to wound. Bad luck. Hmm. I got two wounds there. Good luck. There we go. <laughs> Thank you, Vito. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, that will be it for the shooting. The tactical marines both advanced. 
and you don't have anything else in range to fire. Not bad though, you actually really lightened up this side over here. Uh, now at the end of the shooting phase, I, I get to roll for a miracle die because you killed one of my active faith units, bloop, and I'm gonna get a two, a wonderful two. And also at the end of the phase, she comes back to life with divine intervention right there. We should note these guys can't see a thing because they're completely surrounded by solid walls, but more importantly, they're on the objective. And no legal charges because she's too far away. She lives for now. <laughs> And that's going to conclude the turn. That's it. I'm done. Uh, you get first strikes. That's a victory point for you there. Yeah, pretty good. And uh, I think overall, not so bad. I'm not so bad. Could have been, been worse. Could have been better. Could have been better. 50-50. Yeah, 50, yeah that's, I, I like your turn. I like your turn. It was a good turn. <laughs> it was a good turn. It was. Going to go ahead and move on to Sisters of Battle. Turn one now. Got to retaliate. The bikes were incredibly aggressive to hit me pretty hard. Now let's show the white scars what the Order of the R Martyred Lady are made of. Sisters of Battle, movement phase, turn one. A couple things I wanted to discuss before that. It was my sacred rites and the first miracle die I got at the start of the battle round, technically before Vito's turn. It was a three. You've already seen that in gameplay, though. I just wanted to cover that again here. And my sacred rites were Light of the Emperor and Divine Guidance. So let's me re-roll morale checks, which gives me more chances of rolling ones, which will give me more miracle dice. And then Divine Guidance, every time I roll a wound roll of six or, no, unmodified six with a ranged weapon, it's one additional AP on that shot. Now actually at the start of my turn I have a beacon of faith roller trait to roll for Celestine. I rolled a one unfortunately it happens. Uh, no real useful miracle dice for this turn coming up unless I get a lucky one off my shooting phase. My cannoness that took mighty hits on my right flank. The one that's there to support the exorcist simply moved back to the edge of my battlefield edge so maybe it'll be a little bit safer. I have to get through the exorcist first and if they die then I'm in a bad spot anyways. The second cannoness moved forward aggressively with her relic. Or the, the bolt pistol that's just gonna gun down some bikers, I, I hope. Emulator on my right flank moved forward to screen and just generally be aggressive and get some obsec units near the objective for future turns, both on my right and to my left. Where I deployed Celestine, she was mostly there to support the left flank if I needed it, but turns out I got hammered on the right flank, so she's just gonna go ahead and fly over there and deal with some bikies. Lastly, on my left flank, the Penitent Engines, they just surge forward. They're gonna try and get into combat right now and carve up some enemies. Hopefully they don't take any damage from the Overwatch. Uh, just because I only have one wound left. I might have to charge an emulator in. All of my exorcist stood still just so they can hit on threes as well. One of them is already bracketed at six wounds remaining. The goal of the turn is to hit the white scars back just as hard as I got hit, if not better. Anything less is subpar and I refuse to accept that. I'm gonna go ahead and fire with Wrath of the Emperor, the Relic Bull Pistol. I may have said Martyr's Vengeance earlier. Retcon. Wrath of the, it's a bull pistol upgrade. It's my favorite one. It's like a little Tech 9. It shoots four bullets, hitting on twos. Rerolling one because she's a cannon S. Strength five on this gun. Force to wound. Ah, that's good. Three wounds. Strength five against toughness five. Ooh, AP two. Yeah, it's a nuts pistol. Oh. She just sprays it right across. Oh! I kill one. One. Uh, I mean, what? I'm going to lose uh, this one. This exorcist is going to fire next with its organ missiles and the heavy bolter both into this squad of five bikes. We're going to spend a command point on devastating refrain as well. Pretty basic one, it allows me to reroll any or all of the dice when I fire its missile. So it's 3d3 shots, I can reroll one, two, or all of them. 3d3 shots, I'm just gonna keep it. That happens every time. And the second I don't use it, I roll three. Threes to hit, rerolling ones for the cannon S, who retreated. Nice, nice. Threes to wound. Oh, that's only one fail. I'm very lucky. Very lucky. Minus three, six up save. Die, what? Mikes! Oh, look at that. Three, Ooh, rough, sixes. rough, rough, rough. So D6 damage each. So first guy. Oh, oh no, Luca. Oh, that's super rough. I'm having a rough time here with this. You know what? That's okay. Second one kills it. Third one. Yeah, so it kills two guys. So it kills one, kills another. Ah, I'll kill these two. And this very real, very there heavy bolter. All hit. Force to wound. Okay, wow. Jeez, Luca. Just, you know, you're four up save. I kill. Oh, wow. Okay, there's another a one dies. Uh, let's have this guy die. This emulator is going to go up next. It's going to fire the immolation flamers, or sorry, the immolation, I think flamers, yeah, into these bikes here, as well as the heavy bolter. Two of them, so it's six automatic hits, two heavy flamers, four to wound, only three. Four up save. Ooh, Ooh they're them good. All. all right, they're being tenacious. Heavy bolters on fours, because I moved. Four to wound. No wounds either. That means I'm going to have to commit this exorcist into firing them. I need that first strike, so everything from this exorcist into those bikes. Loading up the organ gun. It's kind of say it's average. It's six shots. Four is to hit though because I'm bracketed. Okay, we got a miss. Three is to wound. 
four wounding hits. Minus three, so sixes. Oh, Ooh. three go through. So one at a time, kills a guy, and kills a guy. And, and then the rest is overkill. Yeah, that's the entire squad. First strike! Moving on to my left flank. I guess we're actually we're gonna be just ignoring the middle of the battlefield completely with our setup here. Uh, I'm gonna fire the heavy flamers into this attack bike. Only one is in range, I believe. Two heavy flamers. We have a total of nine hits. Wounding on fours. No re-rolling. Ah, I got two fails. Four is to wound. Or sorry, four up save. Ooh. It lives. Oh no, it dies. One dies. Yep. Oh, that was going to the attack bike. So yeah, four wounds. Boom, gone. Emulator's only real target are the bikes in front, so that's where they go. The two immolation flamers have 10 hit. Wounding on fours, because it's only a heavy flamer. Four up save. Oh, Ooh. that is not the greatest roll. This one will die, and he will take a wound. I forgot about the heavy bolter. Fours. Uh, and a four to wound. Uh, oh, girl, that's kind of cocked. It's a wound. Four up. Oh, dies. Oh, oh wow. Exorcist now is going to fire heavy bolter straight into the bikes, but the organ missiles down the table, across the middle, into the Predator. Start with the Heavy Bolter. It's going to have one hit, which will wound on a four. It does. Can I save it on a four? Apparently I can't. Just one hit. Mm, this guy goes on to one wound. Now, any keen viewers might realize if I rolled any sixes to wound on any of these shots, they would have been an additional AP. I'll remember that from now on. It's been going great so far. Uh, for his organs. Pew, pew, pew. Uh, oh, down by, lot, down by one. We got five shots. Threes to hit. No re-rolling. Three hits. Strength eight. Threes to wound. Two wounds. Six up save. Oh, they go through. Oh, double one. I don't have any good miracle dice for this, though. 2d6 damage. Oh, three, for three damage. <laughs> you know what? That's a good one. Yeah, that's, that's it's okay. That's what it is. Predator drops down to eight wounds remaining. Last thing to fire before I forget, Celestine is going to bathe those bikes in sweet holy flame from the Ardent Blade. And the Gemini are going to shoot bolt pistols. I'm just going to do them first. We have two hits and just, just one wound. These are going to be at AP, a minus one for a four up save. I got the six. We do, oh. That didn't matter anyways. Yeah. And the Ardent Blade, which is just a heavy flamer. Four is to wound. Uh, we have one wound, but it's AP two because of the six. Five up save. Oh, goes through. All right. And that's just going to go ahead and boop, kill the spiker. End of the shooting phase. I killed the unit with vengeance. So miracle die. Bloop. I got a five. That's it. That's something. That's going to go ahead and bring us to the charge phase where this very ambitious emulator is going to charge the bikes. Ooh, the watch. I'm going to go ahead and supercharge my plasma guns because I'm a crazy person on sixes on the first guy. Rapid firing. Oh, we have... Oh, we got one in there. Nice. And the second one. Ah, nothing. I should have re-rolled the other one as well. Eh, nothing. And I get to re-roll these ones. Whoa! Oh, what up? Invested. Looking for threes to wound. Oh, getting two. Uh, Emperor? <laughs> oh, no! Look, I what monster! What is that? Uh, these dice found at your local mini wargaming shop at uh, miniwargame.shop.com. And the rest of the bolters on sixes, re rolling everything. And the re roll. Oh, that's actually a lot of sixes. Five to wound. Oh, oh wow. Okay. Okay, we got five dice here. Oh, that was a weird roll, but you know what? I'll take two. <laughs> Look at the six. It's, it's ones or sixes, guys. <laughs> <laughs> this game. <laughs> Charging. Good number. Good enough numbers. Five. More or less making room for Celestine to get in. Next up, Celestine is going to attempt to charge into them. No overwatch this time. She's going to roll a seven, which is... That is a perfectly okay number to roll. Oh, she's going to have a hard time with some smash captains coming up shortly, though. And then the Gemini will attempt to charge. They're going to go also seven, which is also good enough. What up? All right, now these penitent engines are going to go ahead and charge. I got no way to really avoid the overwatch, though. Supercharging with my plasmas because I'm a madman. Uh, first two, misses. Oh, uh, oh the second one, uh, uh, nothing. Hey, you guys aren't dead though. All right, bolters on sixes, re-rolling ones. Uh, there are no ones, so just sixes. <laughs> Fives to wound. Oh, two. Oh, jeez. That's enough to kill one of these, so I'm going to do these one at a time because I have me. Oh, they don't have active faith. It doesn't matter. Uh, we're going to maybe take a damage. Berserk! No, we take a damage. Buzz chop, go charge. Just need a five. Oh, you got good, it. Good enough. It's literally good enough to get this guy to there. <laughs> right onto the fight phase, these penitent engines are going to activate first, and we're just going to go ahead and go. Oh, there's a tree there. That's why I can't move that way. <laughs> we're just going to go like this. Buzz, buzz, chop, chop, what up? Now, they have 10 attacks in total, five each to get an extra one for having two buzz blades. 
on the top of their four base. These hit on fours, but they have zealot. So I get to reroll hit rolls, which is not bad. One miss. Now these are going to be wounding on threes because they're strength eight. These are all at minus three, so I have a six up save. Oh, that's in the entire squad dead. Boom, taking out all the bikes. Now they do have to consolidate to contest the objective, but we're not gonna get within an inch of that guy. Uh, we're, actually no, we're gonna go with, Cel I, was, I was thinking we're going with the emulator first, we're actually gonna go with Celestine first. Uh, she's gonna put, I'm just, we'll do the Gemini first, because they could maybe kill one and Celestine will go into the rest, because I don't want to pull them out of combat. The Gemini have three attacks each, hitting on threes. Wow, okay. Fives to wound. A uh, one. Six up save. Oh, goes through for one damage. And then Celestine's Art and Blade on twos. They all hit. Threes to wound, that's rank seven. Four wounding hits. AP three, six up. Oh, they all go through for three damage? Two. Two damage each. Ooh. Oh, that's one guy left. I'm just gonna leave one guy with a plasma gun. Maybe he'll shoot her in the face. Bang. Now the emulator is gonna go ahead, has to get closer to this guy. And then that'll be the pile and we get to consolidate. We're just gonna go like that. Probably should have hit with, attacked with the emulator when it actually went to go pile in, because it was within an inch. I failed to hit anyways. I didn't reroll the one because it was outside of six. So the biker has one attack. He has one for his chainsword and one for shock assault. Hitting on threes. Ooh, getting two. I should note that I am putting them into Celestine. Uh, she's toughness. F three. Three. So I'm looking for threes to wound. Getting one. Two up armor. We're good. Now I don't actually get a miracle die because I was off by one wound killing that guy. Actually, he should be at full health, I think. I have to kill a unit with act of faith. He's actually at full health. But I didn't. I'm off by one guy. And the Penitent Engines don't have the Act of Faith rule, so I don't get the Vengeance Miracle die for now. So it's not looking good. I essentially lost all of my bikes, uh, which is not good. All I have is pitiful little tactical marines. But we have to go to my, my morale phase. On a three up, he's running away. Uh, he is running away, but I can't no, no fear. roll it. Oh, oh, he's good. He's sticking around. Now for scoring, uh, I only we I get a point on my side because I have this objective and Vito gets a point on his side because he has his own objective. The two no man objectives are contested. I only have one penitent engine in range. You have the one con on bike. And then over on this side, I have an emulator in range and you only have the chapter master in range. So current score right now is two to two as we both had first strike. The both Luke and I are down to four command points each as we go into White Scar's turn number two. Turn two for the movement phase uh, for the White Scars. I'm a little nervous. Uh, my plan right now, I don't know if this is going to work. It's a long shot. I'm absolutely going to go into the tactical doctrine. This is where Space Marines shine as a whole. I decided to go ahead and spend one command point on my attack bike for Born in the Saddle. I decided once again to be a little bit more aggressive with this guy, going ahead and taking Luca's back objective. My goal right now is to use the multi melta and get a really decent attack and destroy his wounded exorcist while simultaneously grabbing that objective. I then spend one command point for feigning withdrawal. This allows me to fall back with that one guy with the plasma gun and still be able to shoot and still charge. Being white scars that is. My warlord being the ghost rider that he is, he moved right through the emulator that was in front of him and he's in a decent position that he can charge Celestine. My librarian moved in a decent position where he can use smite and some other psychic powers to help out the tactical marines that are right beside the emulator and also try to smite down some of Celestine's bodyguards. The tactical marines that are in front of that emulator, they're hopefully to charge in and slow down the emulator. I'm also gonna use the psychic power so that that emulator cannot fire overwatch. My right flank, I am a little very, very concerned about it. Uh, that con on bike is hopefully going to make a decent enough charge to then take out those penitent engines. I'm gonna use my tactical marines to soak up that overwatch and then hopefully the con on bike can make short work of them. But first I need to use my shooting to soften them up. That's my plan for this turn. I don't really know if it's gonna work. Uh, this is gonna be my Hail Mary. After that, I don't know if I'm gonna win this one. 
let the plays begin. All right, psychic phase. We're gonna start off with Smite. Uh, putting Smite into Celestine's bodyguards, going off on a five. Yeah, you know what? This could theoretically kill me if you roll high enough. Oh, oh no! no! <laughs> well, he's fine. You know what? I'm just winning command point. Oh, are you now? To reroll. Oh. Uh, so I was gonna think about it because I might need the command point reroll for my no Overwatch, but I think I'm gonna spend it on this one. Just so I don't uh, blow my brains out. Okay, I mean, yeah, okay, 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 yeah. okay. So you gotta roll. You know what? I'm never gonna roll a one into a one. You die. You die. You die. Oh no, that doesn't count. Okay, that doesn't yeah, count. You know what? You you, 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 you called it before it landed. That's good. That's yeah. good. That's good. Four more. No! Oh, come on, man. No! Man. Whoa. Okay. Phil the Glacial Geek has a shirt for this. <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, I hate. The, I'll be. I hate the command point reroll. It gives me nothing but bad feelings. Uh, like I. That doesn't make me feel good. And it rolled for you. This is awful, man. He unfortunately takes D three wounds. The worst. <laughs> D3 damage. He uh, hey, 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 nice. Vito's dice on tight. the store. Tight. <laughs> Four runes remain, but that won't stop him from trying to cast his other psychic power, which I don't remember the name of. Vito, the professional, definitely didn't have to look it up. It's called Storm Read, bro. <laughs> what, is, what does it go off on? It goes off on a six. Totally have a reroll available for this one. Oh, oh six on the dot. <laughs> Good enough. Now, I can't use my ability to deny that because I can only throw one d6 to try and stop it, but I do have a stratagem that I would like to try and use. The Urity of Faith, folks. I have an uh, Sister uh, Adeptus Orite unit within 24. I mean, I got, I got a lot. And Luca totally didn't have to look this one up. No. We are <laughs> professionals <laughs> to the ninth degree. Fair. I, Fair. You got me. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's good. Oh, oh, oh. Got it. There we go. <laughs> this is after the deny roll, but I can't possibly deny it anyway. So on a four or more, I can overwatch. I can overwatch. Ah! Psychic power denied through the faith in the emperor, baby. Or something like that. The sisters of the battle say the white scars get to do literally nothing this game. <laughs> so where do we begin the shooting phase? Uh, we're going to start off with uh, the multi melta Attack bike man. That's this guy right here. Now, where is he going? He's got, I, I assume over here? Yeah, and this is a wounded one. Let's get this show going. All right, hitting on a three. Born of the saddle, it hits. Portal boon, melt up. Oh, we're good. Okay, so I don't have cover here, but I have faith in the emperor. So I have a six up invuln. That's all it is. Okay, here we go. Six up invulnerable save. It's happened before. It's going to happen again. Maybe not, maybe not. I don't know. I'm not really feeling it. I got lucky earlier on. I'm probably not going to get it again. No, I didn't get it. I didn't get it. Now, if I had a six in my destiny pool, you better believe that would have been a six. Yeah, right. we are within a melter yeah, yeah, range. Yeah, yeah, 2d6. Yeah. Show me a vest. Come on. Ow! Do you want to reroll the one or just keep the three? I might need a reroll for that chapter master. Because that's going to be the that's your last command point if you use it here. I'm not going to do it. I do have the Predators, so I'll take the three. That's smart, because I was just trying to bait you into it anyways. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to, I think, your lowest bracket. We forgot to mention, the Bolter's 100% going into this cannonist here. Uh, there's no point in shooting an Exorcist with it. I mean, there is, but like not in this case. Four shots on threes. Rapid fire. Re-rolling, because of the Chapter Master. Oh yeah, he is right there. I'm like, where's this chap? There he is. <laughs> threes to wound? She's got a soft body. Only two. Actually, no, I take that back. She's probably got a pretty hard body. <laughs> what, what's the matter? <laughs> No, she probably goes to the gym a lot, man. <laughs> Vito, there's nothing wrong with a woman having a hard body. body. <laughs> Tactical doctrine, so we got some armor pen here. Uh, blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna roll these um, one at a time because I might use an act of faith. So we're gonna take a damage and, oh, no! I'm, whew, that was close. That's where I used the act of faith die. <laughs> so I would choose to roll a four and perform an act of faith. I'm gonna let you do one of those per turn though. So that's my act of faith. Ooh, that could be risky. Yeah, whatever. One mood. And the chapter master is going to try to finish her off with her hard body. Hard body! Yeah, it wasn't very hard before. Come on, Two's. take the bolts. Oh, Threes to wound. Stupid bolters. And if anyone's curious, they're equal distance between, that's where Vito set it up, between the immolator and her. So it's four wounding hits on her. Eight uh, minus one. <sighs> Yay, Caronis. Well, I've already used the miracle die, so here's all my saves. Four ups. Hmm. Tactical doctrine is going to take a rare day. I have three command points left. I could re-roll it into a 50-50, or I could spend two to make her come back to life with three wounds. You, so, mad, you mad lad. So I'm going to do that. Yeah, She's, waste your command points. I yeah, yeah, waste, I you, you. waste your command points. I dare you. I dare you. So we're going to go with divine intervention, two command points. Mm -hmm. I got one remaining. Good. So she's technically dead as of right now, but at the end of the phase, she stands back up with wounds equal to the amount of miracle dice I'm willing to put into her. Uh, up to three. I have three. 
I'm only going to use two of them though. And I'll explain later what those are. That lone biker, we'll call him Mark Wahlberg, uh, he's going to fire into the emulator supercharging because he has nothing left to lose. And the bolt gun's there as well? Yeah. Nothing left to lose, eh? Supercharging, uh, re-rolling Chapter Master. Chapter Master here to protect. Yeah, oh, Con. Yeah. Threes to wound. Oh, one wound. That's a wound. That's a wound. We got a save. Uh, we don't have a save. Two damage. We got six left. Oh, that's too much stuff in there. And the bolter fire, re-rolling. Oh, that's everything. Fives to wound. Uh, two. Four up save because of the AP. Uh, we'll go ahead and take another damage. Down to five. And I want to make a note. Uh, at the start of the battle round, the reason I had a four to roll for her save earlier is because that's when I got it at the start of my battle round. It's, I'm going second in the battle round with the, the way we're trying to record. I keep forgetting to put it in a certain spot, so I apologize for that if that's confusing anyone. I had a four from the start of the battle round. Uh, these guys over here now, the tactical marines, they are going to be firing into the emulator. One guy's going to throw a grenade. And they're going to be supported by the chapter master. Starting with the grenade on a three. Ooh, hit. Very impressed that you were able to hit that target. Thank you, sir. <laughs> uh, five to wound. What? No. Nothing no good, though. Eight shots, rapid fire. Ooh, that's... One reroll. Hmm. Nah, still one miss. Looking for fives to wound. You got three. Three up armor. Nice Good. one. Oh, four up armor. Take a damage. Four. And then the librarian's going to put his bike into the emulator. Plus his own bolt gun, so I guess six shots. Yeah, he's got six shots. He's got lots of bullets. Hitting on threes, re-rolling everything because of the chapter Shepard master. master. Hello, Ooh, thank nice. you. Fives to wound. One. How could you do this to your ally? How do you, oh, I'm good. Look at me, I'm so good. Oh. Predator now, everything it's got into that exorcist. Three wounds remaining, but T8, so the auto cannon is not really reliable. All right, auto cannons, 2d3. Ah, Balls. there you go, max shots. It's not bracketed, so hitting on threes. It's true, I, 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 I breathed on it with my <laughs> missiles. Three hits. Five is the wound. Two. Oh, that's not bad, that's super impressive at two. Now, I will be behind cover, so I'm back to a three up. Oh, the stupid cover helped me there. Now, I want to go back to, to, to turn one. We forgot there would have been AP two because of the Devastator Doctrine, but we're pretty sure it wouldn't have mattered because he pretty much whiffed all the shots with the one Predator Auto Cannon, and I failed the save on the one that went through on the other one anyways. But the cover does help me here. And the two last cannons. Les Cannons. One hit. Classic Las Cannons. Really classic, classic. Yeah. Oh, yep. I hate Las Cannons. I, I do too. At least this predator. He's going to try the exact same thing. My plan is not working, so I just have to continue. And we, yeah, and we do have line of sight through the building or through the tree here. Uh, it'll be cover still, but man. Heavy 2d3. Okay. All right. Getting four shots. Average is nice. Threes. Threes. There you go. Only one missed this time instead of three. I guess it's the same amount of hits, though. Fives. One. one. Three up or dead. Oh, damn. I, I, the cover keeps coming up. <laughs> Last, Last cannons. Thing. Okay. There it is. <laughs> yeah, there's the one miss, the obligatory miss, and here's the probably failed wound. Yeah, wow, what a there's the last cannons. I hate last cannons. They're the worst. I know. So, like, we're going to go into the post game a little uh, bit, but, like, you know, it was like it was one of those begrudging non primaris white scar lists, right? Yeah. It's. I just, it, it, yeah, because I don't want to take the green marines, right? Right. Well, well, uh. Oh, tactical marines into the engines. We'll go ahead and throw a grenade. The grenade on a three. Nope, not today. That's a two. Sure. Bolt guns on threes, re-rolling the ones. The con on bike. Looking for fives to wound. One. Five up armor, and a five up to shrug off damage. Uh, you take out the engine. Con on bike. He will charge. Uh, oh, sorry, not yeah, charge. He'll shoot. shoot. Yeah. Twos. Reroll the one. Ones. Okay. And fives. One. And save. Yep. That's going to be it for shooting. So at the end of the shooting phase, She's going to stand back up, and I'm going to use these two Miracle Dice I had pooled up. I have one remaining five, and she's going to come back to life with two wounds remaining, and I cannot use that on her again. That did not go according to plan at all, but we're going to go into the charge phase and see what we can do. And no Miracle Die at the end of that shooting phase. On to charging. We're going to go ahead and take it right in the face. Tactical Marines <laughs> charging the, uh, the emulator. Start with the Heavy Bolter. It's not that exciting. Uh, we'll just go ahead and get two hits, though. <laughs> and we'll get a wound. Four up. Four up old marine. Dead. Yep. Dead, because oh, he's old. He's an old marine dead. Oop. Heavy flamer. Uh, only eight hits. Threes to wound. Eight. Oh, hey, that's not great. Four wounds. Four up. Two die. <laughs> hey, you know what? Just eight the overwatch. So they are definitely going to make it in. But I guess let's see what they roll first. Uh, <laughs> Four. Enough. Welcome to the world of good enough. 
And you know what, they're obsessed on that obje objective, so that's important. Being able to deny that psychic power uh, was a big deal for me because if they were all alive and made that charge, they could have wrapped in such a way that I wouldn't have been able to get my sisters out very well. And then that, that was the idea. That would have scored, killed one of my scoring units too, but the psychic power failed. Biker is now going to charge the Immolator and Celestine and those two ladies. The uh, little lady helpers, all right. Yeah. The Superior, the Gemini, I mean, uh, Crack Grenade, uh, misses, and the Bolt Pistol, misses. The Ardent Blade is going to have five automatic hits. Wound on fours. Uh, and the best part is these sixes, because the Divine Guidance are AP2. Three five-ups and two four-ups. This is a two four-ups. Okay, we'll do the two four-ups. Uh, this is not a good start. So he's got, oh, you know what? As long as you make one five up, you're fine. All right. And we make one. So he's got one wound left. <laughs> nice. Tight. Tight. In the O. Worth. I guess that means the con's not getting the overwatch. So it's just that. He just took three wounds for his con. Oh, I guess the con would have had three up involved. Con's going to go ahead and charge everything over here. No overwatch now. In he goes. The con's going to actually commit over there. Uh, the goal is to probably not kill the emulator because it can automatically blow up for a command point. And that would kill Librarian off, three or more kills them off, three or more kills him off, and puts more wounds on the con, which he doesn't want to have to do. Or not the con. Well, it is a con, the chapter master, though. We're going to try charging the attack, but we're going to try and team up on the Cannon S, who just came back to life with both these models. Because White Scars can fall back and advance and charge. Right, and he had, he born in saddle advance from over here, zipped over there. Uh, I will overwatch with the Wrath of the Emperor on sixes. Uh, I get to reroll one, so I'm not going to kill him. Nope. Uh, the attack bike. Uh, he makes it. Just go ahead and roll the other bike as well. Yeah. Also makes it. So, so. he's going to charge and still be able to claim the objective yeah, or contest it against this. Boop. Cinematic. Nice. These guys are going to go ahead and charge the um, big robot. Oh. Uh, penitent engine. Only nine hits. It's okay. Only, only, only. Five, six, seven. Come on. Threes to wound. Uh, that's pretty sizable. Uh, no sixes, though. Not that it matters, they don't have the sacred right rule anyways. Four ups! They are okay, but just four of them die. One guy is left! Sergeant! Sergeant! His charge distance? Five. Good enough. Bang. Well, bam And where's the con want to go? Uh, Same. He's, oh, it's definitely charging. Yeah, fair. No overwatch. And good enough! <laughs> nice. So no heroic interventions on my end because, well, all my characters are already tied up in combat and I have not enough command points to interrupt, so we can start wherever. Where are we going? Uh, we're going to go with the Chapter Master. Now, he has his Chagorn Storm, so he gets an extra D3 attacks with his Thunder Hammer. That's cool. For just one extra. Ah, okay. It's still something. Six attacks, I assume, all into Celestine? Yeah, I wouldn't put everything in Celestine and see what happens. All right, so we have threes to hit, but re-rolling. Even the twos now, Yo, because it's not failed anymore, which is oh, real good. Wow. It's a big upgrade. Yeah. Uh, oh. Unless you roll like that. <laughs> twos to wound. And three. Three, okay. Well, she's got four up in vulnerable saves. She takes... Is that six damage? Yeah. Yes. Okay, well, what we're going to do is we're going to put one at, so in the pool, they have the Gemini are going to take them. There's six damage there. On a two or more, that one takes one. It does. Okay, well, you know what? It's worded much differently. The way it works is if Celestine would lose wounds as from that attack, so it's going to be three wounds she'd lose, I roll a d6 on a two or more, the Gemini actually lose those wounds instead in the form of mortal wounds. So they just took three mortal wounds, which means one's dead and one's got one wound left. I'm going to take one with me. And then I'm just going to have Celestine take the other three. So Gemini's got one left, and Celestine herself is going to be the proud owner of three remaining wounds. Librarian. Uh, he's going to put all the attacks on Celestine. Fair. With his four sword, which is considerable, he's got four attacks on the charge then? Yeah. Okay. Uh, hitting on threes, re-rolling for the chapter master. Oh. Yeah, there you go. Nice. Looking for threes to wound. Uh, getting two. Oh, jeez. Uh, that puts me to my invuln save. Oh, wow. She makes both of them. She's got four up, by the way. I'm going to go here. Uh, might as well combine the attacks. It's always the same. I guess it might matter. Do you have any ambitious plans on the consolidating anywhere fancy? Nothing really. No. Okay, then go ahead and combine them in. We have six attacks combined on threes re-rolling for the Chapter Master. Because everyone's within range, so yep. they all hit. Uh, yeah, they do. And threes to wound. Getting three. Uh, four. Here you go, lady. Oh, I don't have... Oh, I got a five up to maybe make you survive this. Okay, I got to do these one at a time. Uh, not AP yet, so we're naturally going to fail the first one. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, you know what? I'm only going to do it on the last one because she is... Oh, man. I could command point that. I don't want her to die, you know? She's just going to die. Womp womp. 
just because I need that one command point and I can't waste it on a reroll there. So they're just going to stay there afterwards. He's still contesting the objective. I'll have to deal with him. Uh, I will get some Miracle Dice off that at least. It's a character dying and I'm our Martyred Lady, so I get two Miracle Dice for that at the end. Strength. So this is a con on bike. He's got this fancy spear. Yep, which gives him times two strength on the charge, making him strength eight. So uh, five attacks, hitting on twos. Rerolling that one. Ones. Oh, that's actually. Look at her threes to wound. And I have no save against this either, so it's just D3 damage each. D3 damage. That's going to be two, four, six damage. Might be able to survive this. I'll take three damage. She's got two wounds left. Attack the cool marine. He's got three attacks because he's a sergeant. Yeah. They all hit, and he's wound on fives. Oh, oh wow! Oh. There we go. Haven't seen those in a bit. Ah, uh, four up armor. Oh, 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 oh no! Oh, shrug. Oh, he's got one wound left. Oh, lucky. Jeez, nearly forgot about these two marines that charged into the tank. Is one a sergeant? Yeah, one of them okay. a sergeant. So hitting on threes, or rerolling because the chapter master. One miss. Uh, fives. Oh. And we make both of them. We're going to go ahead and fight back with stuff. We're going to fight back with our immolator, who's going to have into the librarian. D3 attacks. One attack that misses. The Gemini is going to attack the chapter master. Uh, two misses. <laughs> and we don't wound. Five attacks with this penitent engine, all into the con on bike, who I assume has an iron halo, four up, save, four up invulnerable save. I hit on fours, re-rolling because I was charged with Zealot. Only two hits, actually. Three's to wound. Two wounds, uh, that force are invuln. Four up? Oh, oh, they both go through. I think they're only flat two. Two remaining wounds, he's uh, got six wounds on a bike there. Now I really want to kill that librarian off because he could be a pain in my rear. So we're going to put Celestine into him, just to we're gonna put two of her attacks in the librarian, and the remaining attacks are gonna go into the chapter master con. Two attacks in the librarian on twos. Ooh, no cannon S nearby. We got one hit. That's a wound. Six up armor. Oh, he's gonna live. So I get for split my attacks and under the con. I didn't expect to kill the con. I maybe just do a couple damage to him here. Uh, two wounding hits. He's got a three up invuln though. I'm strength seven on her, and he takes one. One more. There's one more. Sorry. Oh, one more. So another vest. We take. We takes two damage. It's my last one. I'm just gonna spend it. Okay. It's gonna be a two here. Hey, watch. Reroll, save. Ah! Luke, why'd you say it? I hate you. Because that's how command points it. work, man. <laughs> two damage. And he'll be down to four. Librarian's still alive. That's attacked. That's, that's it. That's it. Uh, at the end of the phase, I do get two miracle dice uh, because you killed my character. I get one when one of my characters are killed, but because I'm the Ard Martyr Lady, I get two for characters being killed. So those are gonna be a two and a four. Mm hmm. Now it's morale time for the poor white scars who suffer. On a four up. Oh, get these good. Okay, good. Six up. Nope, oh, they're good. And that should be it for morale. In fact, that's going to conclude the turn. The scoring only happens at the end. So we're going to mosey on over the Sisters of Battle, as it looks like neither of us really have a whole lot left on the table. Uh, and the middle's like completely empty here. So Vito's had an ambitious plan, right? It was kind of one of those, he took a big hit from the Sisters of Battle on his previous turn, and the plan didn't quite work out. Now the Sisters are in a position to come out of those emulators and lay down the law. I mean, they don't quite know what they're doing to their allies here, but um, they hit like trucks. Sisters of Battle, turn two. Sisters of Battle, movement phase, turn two. I'm in a really good position. Uh, I just have to be able to get my units out of combat and then my shooting into a proper position. M more or less, I mean, I need to get my sisters out of the emulators, wrap around their targets while being on the objectives. Now, this all revolves around maneuvering the Master of Snares, Warlord trait on the Captain Well. Not if I was smart, I'd stay in, but if I fail, I'm still stuck in combat with Celestine. It's not the worst. Start of the turn, my Beacon of Faith from Celestine rolls a five. Pretty gracious for that, it's an amazing roll to get. And last battle round, you've seen it in Vito's turn, I want to mention I got a Miracle Die that was a four, I've already used it though. To actual movement, the Penitent Engine falls back away from the Con on bike because I need to open up his alley for shooting. The sisters then disembark from the nearby Immolator and they walk up around the objective surrounding both the, not surrounding, but getting near the Con and the Tactical Marine, uh, remaining Tactical Marines there. That emulator chooses to stay still just because it's already in range to flame and it might as well hit on threes with the heavy bolter. 
on to the other side with the chapter master, my Canon S, who is back along the edge of the battlefield, moves forward onto the objective, being the only, well, having two models on the objective now with the exorcist and nothing else really threatening her too much. Then the second squad of sisters are going to disembark from the immolator and wrap around behind the remaining tactical marines and threaten the objective, ideally trying to kill off just the tactical marines, and if not, I'll be able to charge in and try and finish them off. But for that plan to work, that immolator needs to fall back, so it does its minimum move. It's pretty crippled. I had forgotten to heal a Geminate earlier on, so I just went, went ahead and did that. It's either heal one back to full or return a slain model if I already have a full, fully healed Geminate. Now, this is where it gets a little risky. I was able to get lucky and have Celestine fall back out of combat. Now, I made a mistake forgetting that the Gemini are a separate unit. So I had to roll separately for them. And again, the theme of the game, the synopsis is Luca is lucky. So I was able to escape from combat there. Otherwise, it would have just been the chapter master beating up the Gemini. And that's not ideal. Now, everything is free. Everything can shoot, even Celestine and the Gemini, because they have fly. The plan this turn is nail and coffin, hit the White Scars hard, leave them with two Predators remaining, and not enough to really contest the objectives, and try and take the W. Going to open up with a crack grenade from the Cannon S into the bikes. That's going to go into the normal bike in the back because it's got a regular amount of wounds. I, well, you know what? I'm a Cannon S. I can roll. I can reroll that. Okay, never mind. We're going to have the Gemini throw a crack grenade into that biker there. We do hit. Three to wound. Oh, we fail. Ooh. And Celestine's going to go ahead and give it the Ardent Blade. We're going to have six automatic hits. Force to wound. And six is our AP two. Two five ups. Oh, oh my them. goodness. Hey, this is. And a two four ups. Wow. Oh, he refuses to die, Mark Wahlberg. Okay. Well, Operation Kill Bikers horribly failed, so we're going to go with Exorcist, who's pretty crippled. Everything firing into the two tactical marines. Serve the big missiles. Uh, we have maximum shots. That's nine shots into them. Fives to wound. Are we rolling any ones? I don't think I see any, though. I meant to hit if I said wound. These are twos to wound at strength eight. And AP three. Six up. They're dead. <laughs> The sisters are going to go ahead. We're going to put the two melted guns into the con, the chapter master. All the, these two bolt guns into the librarian and a crack grenade into the librarian as well. Starting with the melted guns. We both hit. Uh, threes to wound. Oh, they both wound as well. Three up involve. Oh, he does fail one. So, in so instead of rolling damage, I'm just going to make him take four damage. You monster. That's, that's a good And guy. that does take out giving you warlord kill. Then a crack grenade into the librarian, which is going to miss. Four bolt guns, two hits. Fives to wound though. Two. Two. Yeah. Four up save for the AP one. Oh, make that, and then the other one AP. Oh, okay, he's good. You make them both in good order here. Yeah. Exorcist here is going to go ahead and fire. We're going to put the heavy bolter into the bike in front of Celestine and the Exorcist missiles into the attack bike. Heavy bolter first on threes. We have two hits. Fours to wound. Uh, one wound at AP two actually. Five up save. Ooh, goes through. And then the missiles into the other guy, which is going to be average hits. Threes to hit him. Got two misses. Threes to wound. Ooh, that's all of them. Ah, uh, that is, yes. These are actually AP4. Yeah, so I have no save against these. I'll just, it's full five damage. Five damage? Yeah. So that's enough to take the attack bike right out. On to these sisters of battle. Two melted guns forward into the con on bike, and I guess we'll throw a crack grenade into him as well. That means we're going to have three sisters with bolt guns into the tactical ring. Bolt guns first, hitting on threes. Excellent roll. Force to wound. And we got three. Four up, because that AP one. Oh, he's good. He's good. And two three up saves. He's oh, also good. That's sergeant. Two melt the guns from the rest of the ladies. Got two hits. Threes to wound. Wow. Okay, double wound. Two four up involves. Oh, uh, they both go through. That, and doesn't yeah, that, matter that, that what Luca rolls, yep. that kills the con on bike. And then crack grenade goes in. Yeah. Now the emulator's going to fire everything into that remaining tactical marine. Heavy Bolter has got two hits. That wound on threes at AP2. Oh, wrong guy. AP2 just because of the divine guidance. Uh, that does kick up. All right, my object. So Luca's declaring not to make any charges or things like that. You don't want to uh, risk it. I'm going to go ahead and score one victory point over here. Luca will score another two, four, Five, bring the current score right now to uh, uh, seven, seven to, to three. three. Yeah. And with that, the haze uh, oh, that no! goes off falls. That's awful. Mark Wahlberg, he realizes, oh no, I've been fighting my own people. It's the saint. It's the saint. So you know what? We are going to go ahead and make love, not war. And the game ends. The White Scars win. <laughs> the White Scars win. The White Scars win. Woo! What an awesome victory.
<laughs> Luca, thank you so much. All right. <laughs> yeah. You know what? We're going to go ahead and do a little bit of a post game. A little post game for you guys. Hello there, viewers, and welcome to the post game chat between Vito and myself. This is uh, an excuse for us just to kind of relax, sit back, and like wind down after the game and observe it, analyze it. Analyze it. That's the word. Yes, because analyze they're it. the ones doing the observing. That's right. right. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. I'm not really. No, it's okay. I, got I won't back. be doing that. Thank you. I, I appreciate you. that. We're going to be talking about all the stuff that maybe we would have done different or. Like added to our, like maybe that didn't change, work on our list, add, change, whatever, reduce, all, redux. all that good stuff. Just a, uh, a more excuse for you to sit back and listen to our luscious voices. Ooh, well, hello. Hello. So what did, what did you love the most about that game, Ido? Um, <laughs> my early dice rolls. Oh yeah? Some of those rolls were actually really good. Yeah. yeah I mean, I mean I'd, I'd agree. I was terrified. My right flank almost lost all of it right away. I thought the um, impetus that I had in the very early beginning, I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm doing very well. And then you hit me hard. Oh, yeah. I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do. All oh, my bikes are gone. <laughs> what am I, how am I supposed to retaliate? So my biggest fear, uh, turn one, I, I, okay, it was weird. I seen how much you deployed on the right flank, and then I thought, I, I guess I forgot about the chapter master in a way, but not really, because I remember as I was deploying. Oh, your right flank. My, sorry, yeah, my yeah. right flank, not yeah. yours. Yeah. From my perspective, where my double exorcist was, specifically there. Uh, you move forth, everything, like, okay, it's pretty close. I had forgotten that bikes move 14. That's not ideal. And then the attack bikes were around. I'm like, okay, well, that makes sense. I figured that was going to happen at some point a little earlier than I thought because uh, I forgot about Born in the Saddle as well. I'm like, okay, you know, lots of pressure going on right away. Everything starts shooting at me. And then I look at where my emulator is in respect to my exorcist and my characters behind them. And I'm sure a lot of you watch that. And I'm like, I hope that emulator dies. If that emulator doesn't die and you charge it, you're going to be able to pile in and around and then pile into the exorcist to tie it up. Oh, I see, that's what I was thinking as yeah. well. I'm like, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't overcommit my shooting and still be able to charge it. That's, that's, I was, my biggest fear was that, but it was still like an eight or nine inch charge. Yeah. I think it was still pretty sizable. But I also have command points where I can roll 3d6. Oh, crap, that's right. Yeah. So I, I had forgotten about that. But here's the problem is that I got a little over eager. And I just wanted to shoot, shoot, shoot. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, it's fair. So that, that was my biggest fear immediately because... Actresses are great. They're 170 points. Or I don't want to say they're steep. They're less than 200. They hit like something that's 200 points. But the second they're touched by a grot or like a slight gust of wind that blows the corpse of a guardsman on them, they can't shoot anymore. <laughs> they're done. So I was mostly worried about that. The fact that you killed it, I was kind of, okay, I was both happy and sad because I knew my sisters inside were then dead because you just gunned them down with bolt guns. Yeah. And then I was at that point realizing, oh crap, my, my heroine in the making is then probably going to die. Luckily, she survived. I didn't have to use divine intervention on her. I had to use it on the freaking canonist way in the back, <laughs> who I thought was perfectly safe the whole time. So I was completely worried about my right flank on your first turn of the game. But I also noticed how committed the bikes were to getting there. Like, it's bikes. This is what they do, right? It's hard to get them covered. It's hard to hide them behind line of sight and then still shoot with them. Yeah. You're relying on their toughness five. Uh, the amount of firepower that I find Sisters of Battle pack is ludicrous. It's way, it's way up there with Space Marines. It's up there with, it's definitely up there with Space Marines. It's yeah, just, this was the fact that started to interrupt, but this was like yeah. the first time I've actually played against the new Sisters, and I was like, wow. Yeah, well, those Exorcists pack a huge yeah, punch. absolutely. The, the, the long-range flamers on everything, every, like, every, like, melt guns here, flamers there, high mobility, lack of durability, the biggest weakness is right there, right? They just, they just fall over. As, as you've seen, my Sisters got out of the emulator, and I almost... I, no, I, I do always buy some sort of tin can for them to hide in. I will never have sisters on the ground not in a transport because they're pointless at that point. Uh, they, they clock in at about 77 points a unit, which is sizable for a, a, like a, a battle line, a, a troop choice. Speaking of troop choices, um, I decided to take a list oh, that yes. was not primary. Let's talk about that. And boy, did I suffer. Okay, yeah, uh, I think, okay, now, to be fair, I don't think Tactical Marines are a bad troop choice anymore. At 12 points a model, they're pretty cheap. Now, the Predators, I think, is where they were the weakness was. Yeah. Yes, they are, I th okay, how many points is the Predator? Oh, I think it was like... Are they 180 with all? No, what, no. Yeah, I believe one, they're... Crap, how much are they with that loadout? Is it 160, it was, 170? One, yeah, I believe they're around that. Almost, I think they're almost 180. So, they're the ex so if you compare them to my Exorcist, which one is better? At what, at, at what point value okay, that? Okay, he well, here's my <laughs> thing. I hate LAS cannons yes. because they never Same. perform the way you want them to. I hate single shot weapons, except the melted guns on my sisters always work. And anything that has a varied damage, like no. D6, D3, yep. I'm not a big fan of it. No. Um, so, LAS cannons never work out for me. Um, I would drop those two Predators and take a Repulsor Every, any, any day. day. 100% any, any day. day. Yeah. That I assume that your personal... Okay, well, why don't you give the people an idea of what your personal White Scar Army is going to look like? 
2,000 points ish. Uh, well, I mean, for how or, much I have, it's going to be well over. I think almost 3,000. Oh, points. that you did one of those. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah I yeah. just kind of take uh, have whatever like, I want. Like four or five different lists you can do. Exactly. Yeah. Right. I have all that kind of variety. But yeah, it's definitely going to have you know uh, maybe one or two repulsors. Oh, I don't doubt it. Yeah, you just have to have variety, but yeah, at least one repulsor. I mean, so you can hide the bikes behind it. The repulsor kind of moves on up. The bikes, bikes keep up. And then, yeah, the bikes keep up or then spread out, kind of like ants. That's actually a really good tactic. <laughs> I want to think about it. Like, the bikes just, the bikes hold back for a turn, and then they just go to the corners of the table, turn two. Exactly. And then that way they're not getting shot, because the repulsors are actually big enough to actually block the bikes, which I find they their biggest weakness is it's hard to hide them Yeah. on a lot of tables. And, and another really great, great tactic, too, is this, let's say you're going second, the repulsor, everyone's afraid of it, so it takes the brunt of your oh, yeah. of the damage. And it's pretty tough. It is, yeah. and it has a ton of wounds as well. Yeah, it's like 16 at T8. Exactly. So then, as it's taking out all the damage, then the bikes spread out once again, and then they go out and do damage, especially because they have all the plasma guns on it. And plasma guns can do damage. Oh, 100%. 100%. Yeah. And then I also have a ton of other primaries things. Like I have the, is it the Inceptors, the guys with the, the, the bulk gun weapons? Oh, uh, the jump packs? The, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's them. Yeah. Those Inceptors guys are, are incredible. Uh, almost everything in my army is toughness five. So if everything's T5, everything's highly mobile. That's, that should high, be... Yeah, high mobile. That should be the theme of the Wise Guard. Yep. Yeah. Or in the case of the Repulsors, uh, T8. Do you, do you bring intercept, uh, Intercessors? I do. Or do you stick to the not battalions? Oh, I do absolutely take uh, okay. Intercessors. Yeah. Because they're they're pretty pretty meaty. Right. I So between the three troop choices, you got Scouts, Tactical Marines, Intercessors. It's, it's widely accepted that Intercessors are the best troops, and I agree completely. Though I do like the option of the cheaper ones, but the problem is they don't pack a punch like Intercessors can. Yeah. Like a, like a, like <laughs> a squad of five just sits back and rapid fire 30 inch range. You don't even have to, you're just on the back objectives. You worry about all the rest of your toughness five stuff going forward. <laughs> yeah. No one's going to shoot those Intercessors. No. Yeah. Unless they have nothing else to shoot at, at which point you probably lost already. But no, I think that is what you ideally want to go for. for and they, all the bikes have chain swords, of course. And yeah. uh, you have your, I assume, do you have a smash captain on bike? I do, yeah. Is it going with that route? Say, like the same thing, pretty much the same thing you see in this game? Yeah, I always load him out that exact same way. That's a good thing. He's, he's pretty strong, not being able to. So he'll have. If you load him out right, you know, obviously you make him a chapter master, something that I learned really quickly, yeah. which is to re roll everything. Yep. Um, then you give him the master of snares, so that if you are within one inch, uh, if something tries to fall back on a 4+, plus, they don't. You just keep fighting them until yeah. they're dead. Yeah. Um, and then with Trigorn Storm, you get an extra D3 attacks anytime you perform oh, that's a heroic second, intervention. That's or the second lower trait, right? So you, yeah. yeah. Because then you take um, Tempered by Wisdom, which is a stratagem. It lets so you take two. You take two Warlord traits. That's a really, really good So combo. you can potentially have eight Thunder Hammer attacks, hitting on threes, rerolling everything. And four damage a piece if you're in the Assault Doctrine. Well I've never card. been in the Assault Doctrine. Oh, I really want to. One day. It's hard to get out of the Tactical. Because Tactical is just so good. When you have, when you, how many bikes did you have this game? Over 20. Wait. Uh, you had six 19? Six, I think you had 12, 19. plus another seven. Okay, so you had 19 plus two attack bikes. So you had 21. Yeah. So when you have 21 bikes in the Tactical Doctrine, yeah, you want to be in the Tactical Doctrine. That's four shots per bike, all at AP1. Following around a chapter right. master, re-rolling or whatever, all that and stuff. And I always give them chain swords because just in case I go into tactical or, or uh, assault, comp, and yeah, yeah. assault doctrine. But even then, that gives them three attacks a model as well. I think the chain sword is a better option on them over the bolt pistol. I don't, I don't always, like, yeah, I don't, like, I don't like the bolt pistol on them. It's, it's a weird that they can't take a bolt <laughs> pistol as well. Regardless, yeah. regardless. I would. I, I'm eager to see your white, white scar list. The list you brought today, I think it's big. I think the the tactical greens weren't the worst choice. I think it was the predators. But you. Uh, you're playing with one painted scheme armor. You want it, you want them all to be the yeah. same scheme. You want them all to be white scars. So you kind of you're you're limited with a, a very much a seventh edition list. I mean, what I could have also dropped them to take speeders. Oh, yeah, speeders yeah. are fast, yeah. but they don't have what the the, um, the attack bikes do is that they ignore the heavy. Right. Which is really weird for white scars. You think the speeders would also be kind of included in on that, right? Uh, I mean, I have them as part of your list, my list, yeah. but or to take multiple different lists. Yeah. But it's just really, really weird. I would have liked to see that actually. Yeah, because it's bikers that ignore moving and firing heavy weapons. So it kind of says you want to bring bikes, and like it's it's weird too because it says you want to bring bikes. By the same time, your bikes aren't troops. Yeah. That's a, that's what I'm still my biggest disappointment is is that the bikes aren't troops. So an organized play can only bring three squads of them, and they don't even secure your objectives. Your bikes are your, like your mainstay, and they don't secure your objectives, and that's awful. <coughs> yeah. At least I think that's all. That's rough. Well, it's more of tournament play. It is, yeah, or yeah, the, the, the tournament play, right? The, the tournament play, right. yeah. But as it's, they say, it's a suggestion. It, yeah, it's like if you're going to run a tournament, use this organized play chart, which is like no more than three of this, yeah. and uh, detachment limitations as well. Yeah. Uh, but I, I find a lot of people, they, I, like myself, I like more restrictions as well. So, like, unless it's narrative, then 
Actually, I don't know. I don't I, like. I personally don't care myself. But like, why I, aren't they I, troops? I also try to stay with exactly. Yeah. Like, as why aren't they troops? Why aren't they troops? Yeah. Oh. Now, like, onto the sisters, the battle list I brought. This was first time I brought the triple exorcist. We have four, so I, I probably won't ever bring four because you know the organized play thing. I like. To, I I too like to try and stick within that. Uh, I liked how they performed. It was it was always very reliable shooting, and obviously because of them, I was able to chew through a lot of the bikes. Yeah. Uh, two of them combined killed one squad of seven bikes. That was rough. And then the other one helped cripple the other squad of bikes that was taken out by, I think, the, the engines, the pennant engines charging and giving them the buzz. Was like, that is what happened, yeah. yeah. It was just, my experience with Sisters of Battle is they hit like trucks, they hit like a respectable Space Marine army, uh, and they hit fast too. They're, they're hitting you, they're trying to table their opponent on turn two. If they're not tabling their opponent on turn two, then they probably lost. Now, uh, a lot of like highly mobile armies, like things like Eldar, things that can stay very far back, are probably a lot safer, uh, again, or Tau, are probably a lot si safer against uh, Sisters. Sisters want to play against someone who's equally as aggressive as they are, yeah. like Space Marines, or White Scars, for example, or Chaos, and stuff like that, or Close Combat Chaos, I suppose. One thing I think I'd like to note is that on my turn two, if my attack bike and my two Predators were able to take out that kind of character, oh, the plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. my one kind of Hail Mary plan, I think it still would have been a game. Because I would have had your back objective. That's four points. That would have been four points. And then I would have been able to re kind of secure my left flank. And it still would have been a game. But uh, the dice just kind of failed me right at right. the Right. Nothing. I don't think anything really worked for you there. It was one of those. Like, unfortunately, it was like everything needed to work. And I don't think even one of them really worked that well. No, not really. It was just more of kind of born in the saddle. Uh, and then feigning retreat. That kind of worked. Right. And then the dice rolls top of the game worked and then just kind of <laughs> fell right Yeah, because uh, uh, like a quick recap, you wanted to kill my wounded exorcist with the attack bike. Yep. So we got three wounds left, so it's reasonable. Or no, I had six. You did three to it. That's what happened. Yeah. And then you wanted your predators to take out the other exorcist. And then the rest of the stuff around the characters and all that were just going to take out the two remaining cannon S. And then I'd have nothing to scare that objective or my, your four point objective yeah. to my one point objective. And even one of the other predators, so you kill that one exorcist and then the other predator take out the other exorcist. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. I can dedicate two Predators to try and take out the and one. And they didn't do anything. Yeah. Uh, cover was a huge factor for that one. Yeah. And the fact that last cannons don't do anything. Last cannons garbage. And you're paying, I think it's 25 points. It's like 50 points for the sponsor. 50 last points. For, and doing zilch. They, did, uh, they, they failed to hit, they failed to wound, or I made my... I don't even think they got to the saving point. I think they failed to hit wound every time. It's just garbage. But that is going to be the end of our post game. Everyone, thank you so much for watching. Uh, we hope that you guys enjoyed it. Um, yeah, Luke, did you have anything to say? No, I'm. It seemed like a quick game, but there was a lot to it. It's, it, it, it like right away, both of us knew it was gonna be a highly volatile game. It was gonna be like one of us is gonna win really quick, and that was that was pretty much it, right? And it just it I turns out to go for the throat. Yeah, yeah. White scar's gotta go for the throat, especially with the list you built. That old seventh edition, sorry, that old seventh edition list was literally made going for the throat. That's all it was, yeah. and that's all Sisters of Battle want to do as well. So that's that's why it, like you might think two turns is a bad game. It's both. It's what both of our lists want to do: highly aggressive, highly volatile. I just got luckier with rolls and that's I think honestly the fact yeah. anyways guys like Vito said thanks for tuning in hopefully enjoyed it stay tuned for more future ep for more future episodes of Warhammer 40k as always happy wargaming till next time here is the game that Steve and I have set up in the mini wargaming vault this is 1500 points of the word bears going up against the Raven Guard chapter of the Space Marines now funny enough with the scenario we've set up between the two of us is frontline warfare and we've ended up putting everything on the left side of the table. So we're actually playing on, I don't even know. I want to say something weird like a three by three. We're playing a 1500 point game on a three by three table, frontline warfare, very cramped. Not all of this stuff is on the table. I just put it there to show you what's in the Raven Guard list. A lot of this stuff is hiding out in reserve, ready to show up and pounce and ambush my forces now where a lot of my forces are up in the Rhino. So if you want to check out this 1500 point game, though you're not a Vault member, you can click on the link down below and get yourself a seven day free trial to get yourself access to more Warhammer 40k content. Thanks so much for watching guys. See you next time. And as always, happy Wargaming.